Well, a day after Scotiabank announced big layoffs, Desjardins Group is also cutting staff. The financial firm is reducing headcount by nearly 400 employees, with the cuts affecting staff in Quebec. Desjardins says the layoffs are needed to keep costs in line as the economy slows. The company employs about 53,000 people in the province of Quebec. So what could it mean for you if you found yourself out of a job? Are you prepared for that financial possibility? For more on some of the steps to potentially take, we're joined by Jamie Gollenbeck. He's Managing Director of Tax and State Planning with CIBC Private Wealth. Uh, Jamie, thanks for chatting with us about this today. It's sure. a kind of, a, it's a tough subject if you were faced with uh, job loss, of course. Um, but are there things that we should be thinking about well in advance of that possibility even happening. Yeah, absolutely. So we tell everyone we have uh, conversations about uh, financial planning, financial advice, is that number one, of course, you want to have a budget. So you have a budget, you know what you're living on, you know what your discretionary expenses are and what your fixed expenses are. So things like rent, utilities, you've got to pay that every month. Whereas discretionary things like subscriptions, all those digital subscriptions, you know, dining out, vacations, maybe clothing. So when you know what your real expenses are and what your discretionary are, you're in a better position sort of to budget further if you had to. Yeah. And of course, having an emergency fund. We always been talking about this for, for many years, in fact, decades, that one should have an emergency fund uh, socked away in case you do lose a job. Mm -hmm. And experts will vary on how many months worth of expenses most people will say six to 12 months because that could be how long it might take to find a job, even if, if you do find a good job within that period of time. So, And COVID was a, a real reality check on that. You know, did you have an emergency fund ready for you? I mean, there was there was a lot of emergency funds that were dispersed in that uh, time, but a, a lot of people were out of a job for quite some period of time. And small business owners, too, having to close their doors. I mean, that was a, a shone a real spotlight on, you know, whether you were prepared for the, those those rainy days. Um, when you're thinking about that emergency fund, are there strategies that you should be taking in terms of where you're putting that money that's going to make things easier, perhaps, when you when you go to, you know, take it out? Absolutely. The good news is in the last, you know, number of years, decade or so, we had the tax-free savings account. That can be a great way to put away an emergency fund. So in other words, if you have that opportunity to contribute this year, the, minute, the, uh, the maximum is $6,500. We hear it's gonna go up to 7,000 next year, hmm. but the opportunity to put in that amount every single year, if you can afford to do so, is a great way to be able to draw on that later. And the real reason for that is that of course, not only does the money grow tax-free, but you withdraw it, it's tax-free, and then you can recontribute all the amount starting the following calendar year. So if you do uh, get a job again in the future and you have extra cash, you can actually make up that con contribution uh, sort of uh, in the future. And when you're thinking about even just the moment of uh, being laid off and the conversations that you're having with your employer um, when that happens, is there anything that you should be keeping in mind or making sure that they are making it a priority with you, you know, when it comes to uh, your, your exit from the company? Yeah, absolutely. So it's a very, very stressful time. So take some time to sort of cool down and don't let emotions really get in the way because then there's some real financial decisions. So speak to the HR, make sure you understand what that final paycheck looks like, if there's any vacation time owing to you, what is the severance? And ultimately, depending on your situation, how long you've been there, whether or not you should maybe speak with an employment lawyer just to determine whether or not that severance is reasonable, given your seniority, given how long you've been there, and also uh, your employability in the future. So take some time to get some, some good advice. And then if you do end up with some sort of a, a severance, um, strategies around that, how do you sort of manage that? How do you, how do you think about that? Yeah, so you really, again, comes back to the budgeting, right? So you've been laid off, you've got this severance package, you know, you could put it into an RSP if you have room, it depends how big it is. You have, of course, tax-free savings account, if you have contribution room, but then you gotta look at your budget going forward and estimate how long you think it might take you to get that other job. So in the meantime, there's other things that one could do. Uh, there's certainly gig jobs that one might be able to get uh, in between. Maybe one wants to go back to school, get some more education, some retraining. Um, and now with remote work, the ability to work really for a company really anywhere in the world that might open up new opportunities to find uh, new employment. Yeah, are there any other sort of um, 
protections that you could be thinking about for yourself uh, to, to, to pad yourself? I'm not sure when you're thinking about that possibility happening and, and finding yourself in this sort of instance. Yeah, I mean, look, there's all kinds of things. There's certain type of insurance policies that one certainly can get, creditor insurance, things like that, so that if you do, you know, are unable to work and unable to pay mortgages, things like that. Uh, but I think the most important thing is to have that budget um, to have that discretionary fund if you can afford to have that so that if something does happen to your regular source of income, there is this replacement fund that you can use in the meantime while you're looking for that next uh, next opportunity. I wonder how long is the sort of typical lag between, you know, if you if you lose a job, if you're unemployed to actually landing that next job, because I, I, I mean, it, it is tracked by StatsCan in terms of those long term unemployed people. But it would be interesting to have, you know, a sense of just how long you should be preparing for in order to get that next position and probably di differs depending on the type of role that you're looking for, too. It does. Absolutely. The more senior you are and certainly I think even from an age perspective, the more experience you have the higher your income might be and your higher salary expectations might be, obviously the longer it will take to find that replacement job. So obviously someone who's perhaps a little bit earlier in their career, whose uh, salary demands are not as high, might be able to find a job uh, quicker, especially if they're willing to relocate, work remotely, or be a bit more flexible, whereas perhaps a senior executive who's a little bit older, who's demanding a, a much larger compensation package, that will take a long time, in some cases years, to find a similar position. Which really makes you think about the years that maybe you, you, you know, you had that previous job that you're making the big paycheck that you shouldn't really be thinking about it as a, a paycheck for today, but that, that there's a possibility, there's churn. Churn, you know, can happen and it can be, I mean, sometimes it's a, it's a good thing because you want to make a change, but there could be periods that are, that come that, you know, are, dry spells in terms of uh, your pay and that if that's longer then you need to be thinking about that in advance. And that's why I think you know with every meeting that we have no matter what level of client wealth no matter how much income we have we talk about the importance of budgeting the top importance of saving because no matter how much money you have you can spend it all. Even people make millions of dollars a year, spend all the money their expenses get out of hand. Yeah. So we really think it's important sit down with a financial advisor get a budget stick to it and make sure you save for that rainy day. Yeah, 